Hello, welcome to my channel Doll Talks Mashot Lady. This is the second part on the topic of how to write a resume. In part one, I have spoken about the core elements or components which must be there in a resume. And in this session, I'm going to be talking about some of the additional components that you may want to include in your resume. So the first one in this list of additional components are your certifications. Make sure you complete some professional certifications. Now certifications are very different from certificates that you win in certain competitions. Certifications are awarded by international well-recognized standard bodies at the end of completion of certain professional courses. Now most of these certifications come at a cost but I feel that since you've already invested so many lakhs of rupees in your education a few more thousands will not make much of a difference and in fact investing these few thousands will help or enhance your chances of getting a better job. So mention the name of the certification. Next, name the company or the organization that is certifying you. Most of these certifications come with a validity period, so don't forget to mention that. For example, you get your Java certification from Sun. And if you want, you can highlight some of the learning modules. However, this is optional as most of these certifications are very standard and well known. Here are two examples for you. The first one that I'm going to be talking about is the AWS certified cloud practitioner. And please note that the validity period is mentioned next to it. Now this certificate is provided by Amazon Web Services. The next example I have for you is that of SAP Certified Development Associate, SAP Customer Data Cloud. Now this entire thing is actually the name of the certification. There are different levels of certification that you can choose from and this is provided by SAP SE. Now there is no validity period for this certification, hence a no years are mentioned. Moving on to the next category of awards and honors. If you have earned any accolades mentioned under this heading, avoid childish things like a drawing competition that you might have won in your school years. Stick to honors that are more recent and more pertinent to the job that you've applied for. For example, if you won a chess tournament, in that case, you can mention it. And it will be worthwhile to mention only if these awards are of the state level, national or at the international level. The next thing I'm going to be talking about are your interests and activities. And this, in fact, is very important for your resume because companies nowadays are not interested in hiring only nerdy people who are programming the whole day. They want to hire people who have a more holistic development and they want to know what you do other than your studies. So definitely find space in your resume to include this section. Please subdivide the interests and activities first into co-curricular and then into extracurricular sections. Now, co-curricular refers to activities which are allied or you can say parallel to your syllabus and curriculum. Things like you attending a robotics workshop, the IoT, big data, ethical hacking. Either you attend or you conduct a workshop. These are the things you can mention. And also, if you have been a part of any technical fest in your college or you've participated in any other fest in some other college, all of these things can be included under your co-curricular. When we're talking about the extracurricular, it would include activities which are outside the syllabus or the curriculum. So cultural fairs, any hobbies that you have, for example, you know how to play a particular instrument, you uh, create games that interest you, you're an avid gamer, you are a sportsman, all of these can come under your hobbies. And most importantly, I want to draw your attention to the community service. 
Now, India is not very keen on community service, but if you're applying for a job or a master's degree abroad, this will help you immensely. Most of them are looking for people who have a sense of responsibility towards the community. So it is my advice that go ahead and be a part of well-known bodies like NSS. It is at the national level, or you can become a part of a road track club, or you can go and work with any NGO and at least get a certification that says that you have helped them for maybe 15 days or a month. This will really help you in the long run. Moving to the next category of foreign languages, you may want to keep this section, but please avoid mentioning things like you know the English language. The fact that you're writing the resume in English is proof enough that you are proficient in the language. Every Indian is a multilingual, so we all know Hindi and we also know our mother tongue, so give it a skip. In case you know languages like maybe German, Japanese, Mandarin, Spanish, etc., then go ahead and mention it. The last element in this list would be the references. Uh, you must include this if you in fact find space in your resume. It would include the name of someone who is well placed other than someone who is in your family relations. Uh, you need to write the designation of the person, the organization of which he is a part of, he or she, and of course the contact information which would include the email and the telephone numbers. Now, in the next slide, I have some samples of a one-page magazine format. These I have curated from the internet just for you to have a look how almost all the space in the page has been utilized in two columns, just like it is in a magazine. Here is the second example and here is a more colorful example. Uh, depending on your taste, you can decide for a dual color or maybe multiple colors in your resume. In the next page, I'm going to show you my CV, though it is not a resume. I have created it using Canva and I would like you to have a look so that you can understand that in today's times, your resume or your CV can be made very, very attractively. And with that, I come to the end of the session. For more videos on this topic, please refer to the description box below. The name of my channel is Tall Talks from a Short Lady and with that I will say thank you and bye.